上午我们就是跟海浪师兄也谈到，我今年就是来了不少研究生，就是我的，呃，我的研究生几乎就都来了，就老的，那么就剩下一个没有来。那么这一个呢，叫蔡小卓。呃、um, ，The almost all of my students are here. Um, I want to talk about something that has to do with the one student that is not here at the moment. His name is Chai Xiaozhuo. This one, the only one who has not come here is 大部分看了啊，大部分看了，在他那里住了呃整整半年的时间。The、uh, student that is missing, he just got back from Man, what used to be Manchuria,、uh, where he studied with a person called Liu Shanren, the good master Liu, who is uh, uh, some of you have seen the movie that we've made, you know, where the people、uh, treat with storytelling. <coughs> And then vomit into a buckets or so. So that's he went to these emotional healers there. That person, he, is, I should say, is very, uh, very special. I have been in contact with him for three years now. This master Liu is a very special type of person. I have、um, known him for about three years. 呃，因为今天这个姻缘呢，所以我就呃，最先就先把他介绍一下。Since we, that's the first thing that comes to mind, so I'm going to start introducing you to, to、uh, Master Liu's、uh, teaching and clinical practice. 我是零二年呃到北京清华大学这个做访问。In 2002, I went to Tsinghua <coughs> University、uh, to have a Postdoctoral research year. 那么在访问的过程中呢，就开始就，也是一个很很特别的一个音乐。呃，就是当初广西的一个佛教协会的一个副会长，那么就到北京去开会，因为可能。呃，大家不很了解中国的情况，就是在中国佛教界呢，过去有一位很了不起的人叫赵朴初。那、嗯、么赵朴初这个是一位呃大学问家啊，是一个大居士。呃，就是虽然他是不是出家人，但是他位居在这个中国佛学的主席这个位上。那么他去世了，就是您。我看零一年去世的，好像是零一年去。去世以后呢，那么就这个佛教协会这个会长呢，一直空起来。嗯。那么正好就是零二年这一，零三年应该是零零二年，那么就等于改选这个会长，所以广西的这个副会长就来参加这个会会议，他到了北京。嗯、so、uh, that was also. A thing that was for sure not a coincidence. In 2002, when I was at Tsinghua,、uh, a person that is very famous in Chinese Buddhism and that most Chinese people know is called Zhao Pu Chu,、uh, died. He was like not a monk, but he had like the level of a monk because his Buddhist scholarship was so remarkable. And so he was the president, I think, of the、uh, Chinese Buddhist Society. So they had to choose a new one. And there was somebody from his province, Guangxi, who he knew had come to Beijing to attend that、uh, meeting. 那么到北京以后，那么就因为我们本来就是朋友，所以就正好他又到了清华，那么我们就见了面。见了面以后就，呃，要分手的时候，我就问他，我说你在北京还有什么样的活动？他就告诉我，他说。呃，其他活动没有，就是有一个，就是要去拜访一个居士。嗯哼。那么我当时我就问他，你要拜访什么居士呢？哎，他说我这个自他自己也说不清楚，实际上是他是受他父亲之托，他父亲也后来也是一个出家人，呃，叫觉微师，他受他父亲之托，一定要在北京一定要
看望这个王居士，就是王王老师王阳明。当时我就问他是一个什么样的居士呢？你一个出家人去拜访他，他就说他的祖上，类似于好像像六祖这样一个人。嗯。所以我当时我就非常的，呃。很警觉了啊！像这样一个机会，所以我就告诉他，我说你，呃，联系上了这个居士以后，一定要通知我，那么我也能够去拜访他。So um he met up with this person from Guangxi, and at the end he said, well, what else are you doing in Beijing? And the person said, I have nothing else to do, just one thing. My father told me to get in touch with a another、uh, Buddhist lay person called. Mrs. Wang, her name is Wang Yuanwu, and her grandfather or her great grandfather was a very famous person in, in the Manchurian region, who had a status very much like Liu Zhu, who is the sixth patriarch of the Zen Buddhist tradition. And so he was immediately very、uh, felt very interested in that person and said, "I want to come along with you." Ah, 那么。也就是这样一个因缘，我就见到这个王老师这个居士，然后这样就开始接触这个王凤仪的东西啊。那王老师就叫王元武，那么他的曾祖父，我看是祖父还是他？是他，他祖父。祖父吗？父父母的父亲。没有父母的爷爷,爷,爷啊，曾祖父，曾祖父，他的曾祖父呢，就是清末明初，啊，就是清朝末年到民国初年，他是一九三七年去世的，那么一个非常了不起的人。So this is、uh, was the day when I first started to get acquainted with the teachings of Wang Fengyi, uh, uh, F E N G Y I, is his first name. And he died in 1937, and he was working in northern China、uh, at the end of the Qing Dynasty and the beginning of the Republican era. And、uh, this Wang Yuanwu is his great granddaughter,、uh, who was sort of picking up the lineage to continue and collect her grandfather's teachings. 那么王凤仪呢？他是一个农民，啊，就是而且没有文化的一个农民。Wang Fengyi originally was a peasant who didn't have any kind of education. 那么他就因为从小啊，就是在天性里面啊，就是非常的纯啊，非常纯，非常善，而且很很孝顺。He was a, his characteristic was that he was a very、uh, benevolent person、uh, by character. And especially what in Chinese is called 孝顺 which is a filial son. 